All right, let's talk a little bit about our friends at the DSA, shall we? Because uh, they just held their convention over the past weekend, and they voted 704 to 184 for an electoral resolution, which declared, in part, that, quote, it is not advisable for us to form an independent political party with its own ballot line at this moment. They also rejected an amendment to that same resolution, which stated, quote, it is DSA's expectation that socialists in elected office will vote and act in accordance with core principles of the socialist movement. <laughs> so they rejected an amendment that said, we as a socialist organization must hold our electeds to the standards of upholding socialist principles. And yet uh, they passed a resolution by, what is it, 70%, 80% support, uh, which said no third party were committed to running on the Democratic Party ballot line. Um, I don't even need a question for there. I could just go to you for your response. That is, uh, I have to say, a sad state of affairs. And a lot of it, what, what, what it reflects is um, the bleeding of many genuine people that has happened. You know, the DSA grew by leaps and bounds. You know, they exploded in membership after the Trump election. Uh, and these were many of these were thousands and thousands upon young people who were looking, you know, who joined DSA in a search for a fight, some kind of organ to fight back, right? They really wanted something to happen. And then the the leadership has unfortunately helped to completely disintegrate this uh, organization. And so now you have, as you said, a, a convention where a, you know, it's, a, it's a socialist organization and it's completely rejecting the most basic ideas of independent politics. And so uh, this is just, uh, you know, in, in many ways, this is a culmination of what has already been happening. Like if you look at the, uh, not only the, the role that much of the DSA leadership has played in, as you said, in relation to not being able to hold elected leaders accountable, you know, when uh, AOC and the squad, except for Rashida Talib, br uh, broke the railroad worker strike and the whole thing with Jamal Bowman, all of those, you know, over and over again, more than one thing with Jamal Bowman, actually. So they not only did they do that, but they themselves, the leadership themselves, have tail ended the some of the uh, worst situations with the labor movement as well. It's not just on in, in on the electoral front, you know. So, for example, uh, some of the DSA leaders themselves are have been you know in social media attacking those who are calling for a vote no campaign inside uh you know in, in the in really the, wow yeah ups That's amazing. Agreement, uh, That's uh, amazing. Agreement, yeah i could see i mean i didn't expect them not to you know fold into the democratic party but to go as far as to fight your no vote campaign yeah, I mean, that's and, amazing. You know, and, and exactly. And, and you know what, what's what's stunning about this, Keaton, is that one of the tweets they, they sent out, they said something something along the lines, and I'm sure this was one of other tweets, many tweets, which said, you know, outsiders should not have an opinion uh, about this. I mean, that's but what does incredible. that mean? You know, what does that mean? They're fucking the outsiders. They're a bunch of rich right. kids. They're a bunch right. of rich yeah. kids in DSA. They're outsiders. What are they, what are they, if, if they don't feel outsiders have a place in social politics, then what the fuck are they doing? Would you hey, go to Starbucks? Don't, don't start screaming about burning the country down again like <laughs> exactly. you did with Thomas Frank. Just saying, DSA, outsiders shouldn't get involved. A bunch of trust fund kids telling people what to I mean, come on. Yeah, and, and, and look at the other aspect of this also, right, in terms of outsiders. Where was this anger when Biden and the squad were selling right. out railroad workers, like what is what is what does it out what does outsider mean, right? So what we what we see in response is that when it's the question of uh, a working class issue, what's at stake is not only for that specific section of workers, but for the working class as a whole. And so whether we disagree or disagree, and you know, there's there's room for debate inside the labor movement, but to say that any section of the working class should not have an opinion about another section of the working class's, you know, tentative agreement, that doesn't work. And uh, furthermore, what's, uh, what, what kind of, um, uh, what kind of opinions we should welcome and we should reject it depends again on class loyalties. So when Biden is interfering and breaking the strike, that's a bad thing. But when workers are saying, when some workers are saying vote no and some workers are saying vote yes, that's a legitimate debate. And so uh, this really is not an attack on 
this not a, it's not a rejection of the vote no campaign in in per se or outsiders it's a rejection of uh, uh, any attempt to bring a, a rank and file uh, debate or discussion you know so we we don't we don't accept that sort of thing and it is unfortunate that not only the dsa but you know this is this is what happens with business unionism as well so if we are going to fight against business unionism if we are going to build any kind of party for the working class then the way forward unfortunately at this moment does not lie through the dsa yeah no i mean that's that's really incredible i i did not expect to hear that that's a new one that they said well you shouldn't get involved I mean, one of the things I love about Workers Strike Back just as a conception, and I mentioned this in, I think, the previous video that I think you saw, is that it's great to have a labor movement that is not tied to the bureaucracy of any particular union, right? Because where there is that link, there is the potential for, I don't necessarily want to say corruption, I think that's a little bit strong, but there's an incentive to fall in line, you know, to be part of the group, right? Whereas if you have this this mass movement of workers from all different kinds of unions or even non-unionized workers that will always show up for the most militant uh, factions of the rank and file, that's hugely important. And the idea that there would be any second guessing of that from a so-called socialist organization is just absolutely flabbergasting uh, in my view. Please clap.